No matter how many miles or kilometers an electric car can travel today, you can bet a sizable chunk of money that someone, somewhere, will dismiss the range as being inadequate for their needs. That they might perhaps argue that they do not wish to wait for the battery to recharge on a long distance road trip. And of course, use that as a justification for not actually buying an electric car. If you're an electric car owner, you already know the reality of living with a plug-in vehicle is very much different to the hyped up fears about range anxiety and charge time. Most modern electric cars on sale today have ranges in excess of 200 miles per charge, can recharge back to 80% full from empty in under an hour, and can easily meet the needs of 99% of daily driving duties from an overnight charge. Yet the fear is still here, and thus, Tesla supercharger network or not, 400 mile battery packs or not, there's still a continuing drive to develop ever more capable battery packs that can deliver incredible range for a low price, have a long life, and can be recharged in just a few minutes. We've covered plenty of battery breakthroughs on this channel before, but most of them have come from university laboratories or startups spun off from the same. A few are built with VC funding and are waiting for their big moment. And some do come from big name companies. And when it comes to battery manufacturing, there really are a handful of firms around the world that produce electric car battery packs in significant volumes. And one of them, Samsung SDI, has just announced a brand new type of solid state battery, which it says can offer energy densities of up to 900 watt hours per liter, while retaining a 50% volume reduction when compared to a lithium ion battery. It also says the new pouch cell with a composite silver carbon anode could pave the way for electric vehicles capable of traveling up to 800 kilometers on a single charge. Let's have a look at the chemistry, and I'll try to explain things as best I can. But I'm not an expert, so if I do make a mistake, please politely let me know in the comments below. Sadly, I don't have specific images of this particular battery breakthrough, which in of itself isn't unusual in cases like this, so I'm afraid we're stuck with a lot of stock footage for this video. Most electric cars on the market today use some form of lithium ion battery pack in which the electrolyte, that's the thing through which ions pass from one electrode to the other, is some form of liquid. It's usually a gel or a paste. But in solid state batteries, the electrolyte is made up of a conductive solid through which ions can pass. They're generally thought of as a much safer alternative to lithium ion batteries because there's no liquid or gel that can escape and thus cause a fire risk. They tend to be smaller because a solid electrolyte tends to require less physical space than a liquid one, and they tend to require less cooling, which also reduces the risk of overheating and fires. The downside, one of the largest ones, is dendrites. Think of them like itty-bitty conductive stalactites and stalagmites that grow on the surface of the electrode through continued charge and discharge cycles. These can eventually impact on battery cell efficiency, and if they get too large, can actually cause short circuits and other issues which render the battery cells useless. The new chemistry being proposed by Samsung uses a very fine layer of silver carbon as the anode. It's just five micrometers thick, and this super thin anode is one of the reasons the battery boasts such a high energy density. But it's also said to resist any dendritic buildup, which prolongs battery life. Which is why I'm sure many will ask the following question. When is this revolutionary battery going to make it into electric vehicles? The answer, I'm afraid, is not so fast. The cell, developed by these three engineers at the Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology in collaboration with their colleagues at the Samsung R&D Institute Japan, is still very much in its early stages of development. Sure, the researchers have just presented their study on the high-performance solid-state batteries to Nature Energy, which of course will lead to publication in the same. But as I've reiterated several times before, there's a really big difference between the laboratory and mass production.
Because the research has been funded by Samsung, however, I'd suggest that there is perhaps a higher likelihood that we'll see this chemistry make it into further towards production than some other chemistries we've seen in the past. That said, I'm not an electrochemist, so I'm not going to presume anything here. I can tell you that Samsung has committed to furthering the research and says that it's hopeful it can use the research to develop and refine a commercial solid state battery product. And if it does, that's certainly going to give us some very exciting ranges to look forward to in the future. Will this battery become a main cell type? Will it replace lithium iron? Well, it might, but only if it delivers the promised 1000 plus recharge cycles it said it does before it needs to be replaced. Most electric car battery packs today need to survive somewhere around 5,000 recharge cycles before they start to have problems. But on the flip side, the larger the capacity of the battery, and thus the larger the range, the less frequently you have to charge. If this battery really can deliver 800 kilometers per charge, I'm doubtful most people will need to charge more than once a week for daily driving needs. And that would translate to, what, more than 20 years of daily use and well over a hundred thousand plus kilometers of driving. So there you have it, a new solid state battery that makes use of a very small light layer of silver carbon is lighter and more energy dense than today's battery cells, but which isn't quite yet at commercial readiness. Only time and a lot of R&D money from Samsung will tell if it will replace our current lithium ion batteries or not. That's it, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time.